Hello, this is Justin from The Tech Train here. And in this new series of tutorial videos, I shall be showing you how to begin programming using the Small Basic programming language. The Small Basic programming language has been around since 2011, and it's based upon the very popular Basic programming language, which has been around since about 1964. The small basic programming language is quick and simple to pick up and it really only consists of about 14 keywords. Uh, of course, there's a lot you can do by combining those keywords in different ways, but we're going to start with the basics and work our way through. Uh, this is a tutorial series suitable for people who are learning programming in school or for anyone who's just curious in learning the basics of programming. The first thing that you'll need to do is to head over to this website, which is where you can download Small Basic. It's completely free. Uh, you can go to smallbasic.com, which will redirect you to this website here, or you can simply go to Google and search for Small Basic. Once you find this website, which may of course look different depending on when you're watching this video, um, you can then click the download Small Basic and install the program. And when you do and you run the program, this is what you will see. So this is Small Basic. It's a fairly simple developer environment or IDE, what we call an integrated developer environment. And there are three main sections to it. You have the toolbar along the top with a few basic uh, straightforward tools. So you can see you've got the new open save and you've got cut, copy and paste here as well, plus your undo and redo and you can run the program using this blue arrow. Not gonna worry too much about import and publish just for the moment. The next thing you've got is this um, area where you can write your code, this is the editor. So this is the uh, the, the part where you can type. Um, so that's the uh, where you'll type all of your code. And this little window here can be expanded. You can have this any size you want. And you could have as many of these open in one go as you like. So you can have multiple programs open, which allows you to copy and paste from one to the other or learn from one and adapt it to another. Um, if you find that when you're writing the code, it's a little small, and certainly it is on mine at the moment, you can increase the font size, not through using the toolbar at the top, uh, but by holding down control on your keyboard and using the wheel on your mouse, by wheeling uh, the wheel on the mouse forwards, you can increase the font size, which I'm gonna do to make it a bit easier for you to see the code in these tutorials. Uh, the third and final area is the surface, which is this sort of background uh, here where our code is in front of it. So there we are, that is, small basic uh, that's the first step so once you've downloaded and installed small basic you can open it up and then come back to this tutorial now the classic simple program that everybody learns no matter what programming language you're learning is what we call the hello world uh, program the hello world program simply teaches you how to write a program that gets the computer to say the words hello world or to display the words hello world. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that we need to be aware of when we are writing programming is that there are generally three parts to most of the statements or lines of code that we're going to write. Uh, the three parts are the object, the method and the value. And these three words are really important, object, method, and value. The object is the thing that we are talking to, the thing we are controlling at the moment. The method is what is it that we want that thing to do. And the value is something like how long do we want that thing to do it? So I'm a school teacher, so the object might be one of my students. Uh, so it might be Emily, what do I want Emily to do? Sit quietly and value how long for 60 minutes. So I might say Emily dot sit quietly brackets 60 minutes. 
So those three words, those that structure of three parts uh, is the sort of structure we're going to see a lot of when we're writing programming. And that applies not just to small basic, but to any programming language. So you might say uh, Emily dot sit still brackets 60. Um, you could have um, John dot stop talking brackets 30 minutes. We can't expect quite as much from John. Um, or we perhaps we might expect, um, let's see, colleague dot make tea brackets. Um, well, probably about 12 per day, I think is probably about right. Um, so you can see this uh, this structure then of programming. So it's, it's really not much of a leap beyond what we would understand as plain English. Uh, we're just simply using punctuation a little bit differently, uh, or what we call syntax. Uh, we're using the uh, the coding here. Um, you can see as you're writing it out, uh, it, it's coloured. So these little dots here that separate the object from the method have this little uh, brown coloured full stop uh, or period if you're uh, in the US. Uh, you can see that afterwards the value is in these round parentheses or brackets and the value is in this orange color here. Uh, so you can see when you're typing code that it's colored and that coloring just helps you at a glance to see whether you've made a mistake, whether you've forgotten something or mistyped something. So we want to write the hello world program. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is we need an object. And the object in this case is something called the text window. Don't worry about what that is at the moment. We'll see it in just a second. Now, as I write text window, you'll see that rather than writing Emily or John or colleague, uh, text window is an actual recognized code word in small basic. And so because small basic recognizes this word, it says, all oh, right, yeah, I, can, I know that word. Um, I can help you with that word. In fact, it can help you in multiple ways. Uh, first of all, as you're writing it out, you can see that it pops up in this window. You can scroll down to text window and then either click on it, uh, double click on it rather, or press enter. And that will complete the word for you. So if you're rubbish at spelling or typing, then this is fantastic because it'll do most of it for you. Um, now, because we've written the object, that's the thing that we want to control. Uh, we now need to put our full stop and add in our method. What is it that we want this object to do? Uh, Emily is sitting still, John is shutting up, and my colleague is making tea. What is it that I want the text window to do? Well. I want the text window to write a line. So I'm going to choose write line. You'll see that there are two very similar uh, methods here, write and write line. Both of them will write uh, some text onto the screen. Uh, but the difference really is that write will just put the text on the screen, whereas write line will put the text on the screen and then press enter so that whatever is written next appears on the line underneath. So I'm going to choose right line. So there we are. We've got our object dot method. And now in brackets or parentheses, we now need the value. What is it that we want it to write? Uh, we'll put this in speech marks because this is uh, text or what we call a string in programming language. Uh, we use different words for things that we all recognize and understand. Um, I think it's really just to put off people uh, so that it makes us programmers seem a bit special, uh, a bit clever, maybe even bordering on genius. But don't let it put you off. It's just a ruse to try and make us look cleverer. Uh, so we'll use the word string instead of just text or writing. So we've got speech marks and we're going to write the words hello world. Um, and we'll put an exclamation mark at the end because, well, it makes anything more fun, doesn't it? Close the speech marks and don't forget to close the brackets. That's the biggest mistake that you'll probably make. And don't forget, everyone makes mistakes when programming. So that's just a fact. If you make a mistake, uh, well done, you're trying. It's like riding a bike. You don't get on it the first time and that's it. You fall off lots. Um, you will make mistakes when coding. It's fine. Uh, not a problem at all. Can't break anything. 
not unless you'll learn to program whilst using the computer used to control a nuclear reactor or something, but you're probably not, so we're, we're probably safe. So um, we've closed the brackets and then we are done. So at this point, we can run our program. If you want to save it, you can do just click save or save as and save it just as you would a, a text file or any other document. Uh, make sure you know where you're saving it, give it a sensible name. But other than that, it doesn't really matter. Uh, effectively, it's, it's not much more than a text file, this. Um, to run it, you can either click the blue triangle at the top or you can hit F5 on your keyboard. So once we run the program, now it's appeared on my other monitor, so I'll just drag the window across. Uh, there we are, we can see that we've got this little window here. This is the text window. Now it's called the text window because it's a window and it displays text. That's pretty much it really. Um, you can see that we've got our words, hello world, and then underneath press any key to continue. That just simply is small basics saying, I'm done, I've finished the program. Um, so press any key and I'll close the text window because we're finished here. So press any key and we're back to this window. Um, and we can change any of this if we want to. So we can put some different words in here, howdy world. Run this and again, it's gonna appear. The, uh, I've got three monitors set up here and of course it's uh, opening up the text window on the wrong one. But there we are, you can see again, you've got the um, text window there with these words in here. So you can pretty much get your computer to say anything you like just by writing in those words, hello, uh, hello world or whatever it is after text window. So remember, we've got object, the thing we're looking to control. And one of the things we can control in Small Basic is the text window. Uh, the method, which must come after the full stop, and this is the thing, the action that we want the object to uh, do. And then in brackets, we have the value. What is it that we're wanting it to display? Or what color do we want it to go? Or how long do we want it to do this? Or how many times do we want it to repeat something? All of these sort of things are values. Um, so that's the, uh, the first step to Small Basic. I'm going to break these tutorials up into fairly short um, videos because I think the best thing really is if you try something uh, and just do one little thing at a time. So finish this video and by all means click on the next one and pause it for a minute but try this out don't just watch the videos and think yeah yeah i'll remember that uh, because you will bits and pieces of it but really like riding a bike you didn't watch somebody else ride a bike and then you got good you have to get on it and you have to try it yourself and you have to look away from the screen away from the monitor um, where the video is playing you have to look away from all that stuff um, and go cold, as it were. So look at your own screen with your own small basic window open and see if you can still write that text uh, without having to refer to my video or any, to any notes. Um, so there we are. If you have any questions, um, then please do leave them in the comments below. But otherwise, we will look in the next video uh, at taking this slightly further and thinking about input as well as output. So I'll see you in that video. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, please do click the subscribe button. And don't forget, if you hit the subscribe button, click the little bell icon next to it and you'll be notified when I upload the next video so that you can keep up to date with this tutorial series. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them below. I do read all comments and they do help to inform future videos. And I'm always happy to offer help and advice as well. Uh, if you want more specific advice or you want to be able to download resources which I create in these videos, uh, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash the tech train. You can sign up there and receive a whole load of additional benefits and advantages as well, including one to one technical support and help. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and leave a like and I'll see you in a future video.